Brody Khan. So we're going to get started with the comic book panel. I'm Kelsey. I'm the head of VIP relations. And we have your fabulous comic book team, Andy, Katie, Heather, and Tony. We're going to come up stage and talk to you guys a little bit about what they do. Woo! bedroom window, okay? Sorry! <laughs> I think we should all... It costs take, extra! I think we should all take a moment to appreciate the wonderful cosplay that we have on stage right she's now. The, she's the front half of Zakari and I'm the back half. <laughs> so, uh, first, you just kind of, you know, get it out of the way. If you guys want to introduce yourselves, talk a little bit about what you do on the comic, how you got started in the industry, and who your favorite pony is. Yeah. Tony, would you like to start? Uh, my name's Tony. I draw uh, My Little Pony comic books. I draw. I did covers for like the first 11 or 12 issues of the main series. I did at least a cover on every one of those, and then I did a bunch of the micro series covers. And I did micro series number two for the My Little Pony annual featuring the Equestria Girls, and then I did Friends Forever number two, five, seven, and the soon to be at least nine. Uh, I got into the My Little Pony because uh, I knew the editor, Bobby, and I sent him samples and he said, would you like to draw My Little Pony? That is a very short story about That's how I, <laughs> about how I got to draw exciting. My Little Pony. He was like, you can draw. I especially like the car chase in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's full of intrigue. Um, but, uh, least favorite pony? Or most favorite pony. <laughs> least favorite, least favorite, favorite pony? Uh, Diamond Tiara. Yeah. <laughs> Most favorite pony, Applejack, I think. Right. Most favorite pony to draw right now is definitely Granny Smith. Um, was there another one? Nope. That... Yes, go down the line. Okay, Heather, you're up. All right, I'm I'm Heather Breckel. I work as the colorist on the My Little Pony comic. I've worked on pretty much 90% of the comics, including um, issues one through 20. Um, number 23, 24, um, I've worked on about probably like half the micro series of Friends Forever so far because nowadays I'm pretty much on everything with Tony, so he pulls me into a lot of work. Yeah. I got into Pony because I was already a fan of the show and I saw it announced on Equestria Daily that the comic was happening and then I, I was already working off with Bobby Curnow, my editor, on Godzilla Half Century War and the Ninja Turtle micro series, and I was like, "Can I please work on Pony?" And he was like, "Okay." And I was pretty much like, <laughs> "That's Bobby, our editor's a okay. he's, he's a sweetie. Sweetie. he's a firecracker. <laughs> he's a firecracker. <laughs> Why don't we go down to the mall shop and have ourselves out in the egg whip? <laughs> and we'll go see the new Betty Davis movie. <laughs> Those are going to say malls. Let's all go to the mall." <laughs> favorite pony? Sing louder. Yeah, my favorite, favorite pony. Yeah, my favorite pony is Rainbow Dash. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Diamond Tiara. She's a juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw Dawson's Creek. Remember when they had like the Diamond Tiara character on Dawson's Creek and then she drowned in the creek? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the sweetest. I can make that happen. <laughs> can one of the cutie markers it can happen. figure out? Katie yeah. will kill your waifu for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, she had my waifu. Sure. I'm Andy Price, and uh, I've been drawing with the book since issue one. We did the Return of Chrysalis arc, one through four. We did um, Big Mac, uh, how Cadence and Shiny Armor came to be. Um, what else did we do? We did some other stuff with ponies. Uh, uh, the Rarity Micro. Rarity Micro. The Luna, the Luna Micro, Micro. Reflections. The upcoming Reflections, Friends Forever. Uh, next Rarity month's Apple Friends Forever. And the, or this month's. 
the newly announced <laughs> last week at San Diego, the good, the bad, and the ponies. Good, the bad, and the ponies. <laughs> So, who wants some M&M's? M&M's, M&M's, M&M's. That's just gonna happen. Oh! Yeah. Did you just gonna, like, injure someone? <laughs> You're gonna get like, ejected. Get it's all fun and games until somebody loses an eye. Favorite pony, Andy? My favorite pony? May or may? Mm, no. <laughs> I think everybody knows my favorite pony by now. That's right. <laughs> all right, all right. And I, it's... It's starting to become this this little underground legend. Who's my least favorite pony? Rainbow. Babs? Babs. Really? I love Babs. What did she do to you? Fighting words. She's got the coolest hair. Looks like she's straight now. is best pony. Chrysalis is best monster. So, all right, Katie. All right, first, this bathrobe is super hot up here. Oh my God, I'm taking it off. Take it off very slow. That was a good joke, though. That No one wants to see that. All right, my name is Katie Cook. And I work with the super awesome Andy Price on everything that he just said. Uh, basically, if I have written it, then Andy has drawn it. And you all super missed it, because when this hall was empty, I did like a dance for four minutes on the middle of the stage. <laughs> the video will be sold to the highest oh. level. And then I read some bad poetry, which I did bring with me. You should tell us more. Have you guys, have you guys come to the table to get any of Katie's bad poetry? Yes. I have been writing bad poetry for a donation to the American Diabetes Association, and I brought a few with me. What did you read for us? I'm going to, let me see. <laughs> have you They're written one about, about diabetes? I did not write one about diabetes. Which <laughs> pony do you think most I haven't drawn a Wilford Brimley pony yet. Oh, there you go. Uh, before I, uh, about, I will introduce my favorite pony in this poem. Twilight Sparkle spells words like narkel when she cheats at Scrabble. Yeah. <laughs> that will be five dollars, everybody. Can take it. This see. is your writer, people. These are the jokes. We don't think. You should compile them in a book for the charity. Oh, they're so bad. Oh my god. Spike ate three emeralds. Oh, he geez. pooped out a diamond. He gave it to Rarity. <laughs> This is if you give him a week in a high fiber diet, he can have a tennis bracelet for you by next Tuesday. <laughs> oh my God! See, all these post-it notes are like not even a fifth of them. Um, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with this one before we move on because it's Andy's favorite. No, I got two. <laughs> Luna speaks in the royal we, yeah. we we we, <laughs> all the way home. <laughs> I'll just go for an hour. <laughs> All right, and just one more, one more. Dr. Hooves, wibbly wobbly, because he's missing a horseshoe. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel bad. <laughs> like every time somebody was like, thank you, I was like, I told you it was terrible. <laughs> you were warned, super warned. <laughs> So, other than extremely entertaining post-it note poetry, what sort of things do you guys work on when you're not working on the My Little Pony comic? <laughs> Tony? Mostly, we're just working on the My Little Pony comic. <laughs> My Little Pony takes up probably about 75% of my time, uh, but I also uh, draw covers uh, for, like, Purgatory, who was a 90s bad girl comic. Like, in the 90s, they had this whole thing where there was just, like, comics about boobs. <laughs> I, do, I do covers for that. They brought her back and I do covers for that, but I do like little baby covers, so no boobs. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm working on a graphic novel for Oni. It's like 165 pages long and it's almost finished. And uh, I'm doing another uh, 
like a mini series for a small yeah, company. Yeah, what's it called? What's oh, it called? Oh, the the uh, graphic novel is yeah. called Jeff Steinberg, the Champion of Earth, and the, then I'm doing a graphic novel or a, a mini series at a small publisher called Action Lab that's called American Goth Chick. And it's about a teenage girl that writes mopey teenage poetry, and the poetry comes to life and starts killing people. <laughs> it's terrible poetry, also. All right. I pray it's none of Katie's. It's not on post it notes. Katie's the main character. Yeah. <laughs> I would not buy that book if I were the main character reading my poetry. It would be super bad. Oh. Oh. Get out of here. Aww. You leave right now. He just wrote the tagline for the book. <laughs> you should give him a dollar. <laughs> he just wrote the jacket blurb. <laughs> okay, Heather, what do you do besides that? Well, I also work on, um, for IDW, I work on the Ninja Turtles um, animated series cart um, comic. Uh, I also work on my own webcomic that's starting up called The Fenora. It's, I don't really have much of a website yet because I got really busy coloring a million pony comics. Mm -hmm. So that's eventually coming and when I'm not doing that, I'm watching anime or petting cats. Uh, I'm kind of like Tony. Uh, I wake up in the morning and first thing, pony. <laughs> pony. Gotta do the ponies. Gotta make the donuts. Um, <laughs> Uh, other than ponies, when when I can fit stuff in, uh, I've done some other covers for other books. Uh, I just did, is it Action Labs that does Skyward? Yeah, does Skyward. Yeah, did a cover for Skyward that's going to be coming out. Um, Bobby keeps me on a tight leash, though. Bobby's not here, right? You did Littlest Pet Shop? I did Littlest Pet Shop. I did Adventure Time. Um, so. <laughs> but yeah. Um, we wake up and it's just ponies, 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 ponies. cereal, you, cereal, ponies, ponies, ponies. <laughs> and when it's not ponies, I'm tending to four cats. I just moved from Alabama to Georgia. I haven't unpacked yet. Last week was San Diego Comic Con. We had, I had a day at home and I slept the whole day. <laughs> and now we're here and then we go to Boston and, and then I'm gonna explode into a fine red mist. <laughs> I did a pony cover in between. <laughs> yeah, I've got a pony cover too. I've got a pony cover too. So. Um, hello. <laughs> I'm, super, I'm super intimidated by the giant Katie on either side of me. <laughs> I know. I dig it. I can see her nose hairs. It makes me kind of nervous that, um, that we're going to be up here. But other than uh, My Little Pony, uh, I have some other irons in the fire. It was announced at San Diego that I have an unannounced Marvel project, which I think is the <laughs> Big announcement, unannounced. Um, it's small, it's super small. They did mention it was in the Spider-Verse, but I'm really excited about it. I'm happy to be part of the Marvel, uh, Marvel family. Um, and uh, I just did a bunch of uh, animal variant covers for Marvel that were really funny, like Thor as a platypus. <laughs> And Modoc as a duck. So he's Modoc. And uh, Wolverine is an otter. Like things like that. They were fun. Come on. They were fun. Um, Moon Knight is a hippo, which after I finished it, I was like, why didn't I do a cow? So it was Moon Knight. It is like my life regret. <laughs> it's not too late. That's the fun that got away. Uh, and other than that, uh, I do. Uh, uh, some stuff for Star Wars, uh, I've done Maya, and uh, my own uh, webcomic Gronk, and then I've done some children's book stuff, and I have two kids that take up a super lot of my time. I'm a parent. Uh, a lot of people learn that about me, and they go, you are allowed to have children? Because you're like super irresponsible. So, but I do, and they're adorbs. Love them. So when you're working on original material or personal projects, how do you go about creating a setting? And is your method different for creating unique universes like a Westeros or a Star Wars versus settings based on the real world? Did you say how did you go, out, go about creating a setting? Mm -hmm. And is your method different for if it's a completely unique setting versus one that's like a based on what's going on in the real world, like a Harry Potter, where there's bits and pieces that sort of already exist. 
Yeah, usually when I create stuff, it, the setting is the real world, and then the scenario is sort of what will be ridiculous or, or exciting. It's just because I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm like J.R.R. Tolkien, I don't have time to write like a, an elf language or anything. So, usually just the, the regular world. Yeah, I think um, depending upon this, you know, if it's something I'm not really familiar with, then I'll, you know, I've got to research it. Um, but, you know, I'll do a bunch of sketches and, you know, if it's a particular characters, I'll go through a number of different designs. Uh, and partly it's, you know, what is, what feels right with the character and stuff like that. But um, as far as, you know, illustrators go, we, we file everything away in the back of our heads. We look at a building it's like, I'll, I'll need that later. I'll, I need this car. I need this person's expression. So I think we're researching whenever we're conscious. Yeah, yeah and as, as far as writing, uh, when it comes to My Little Pony, I've, I've got a great advantage in the fact that they're already pretty established characters, and, you know, when I put them in a scene and put them in a setting, I can sit there and I've got all of the main six as toys on my desk, and it's like, how would Twilight react to this situation? And I kind of act it out, because that's what you do. <laughs> um, and it's like, here's Rainbow Dash, how would a jerk kind of react to this? <laughs> that is set out of love. Because she's a little bit of a jerk. That's why she's awesome. I love that she's a jerk. She's, she's got some. She knows. She's she's like twenty percent jerk here. Rainbow, Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is the is like Reggie in the Archies. Yeah. She's, she's the yeah. jerk that you hang out with and you're not sure why, but you like her. Anyway. Yeah. You know, every once in a while you look at her. Why are you here again? Oh, I didn't say that. I did not say that part. It was all I am doing. We can share that. Uh, Haterade! <laughs> they learned a new word today. <laughs> yes, we, we learned a new word today. Haterade. Haterade? I was like, someone to five years ago. No. I'm old! Is, I live in a basement. What do you want to do? You guys need to watch more internets. <laughs> That's where we get the cat pictures, right? Yeah, okay. a few. So, what are the... A lot of you also have original work. Um, what's the difference in challenges or benefits of working on a derivative work my, like My Little Pony? And what kind of leeway do you have to make creative choices narratively or uh, visually? Um, I would say that it's the fact that it's a license and we have editors and licensors that go, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. As an original work, you get to go, yay, I can do whatever right. I want. Um, I think, I don't know how much you guys really know about the, how the comics logistics work, but you have your writer and it goes to the editor and then it goes to the artist and it goes back to the editor. You know, the editor checks each step of the way, but with us, we've got an extra step because of the licensing mothership. So <laughs> she'll come up with a concept, it's gotta to go to our editor, then it's gotta to go to the licensor. So there's, we've got a little bit more steps and, and everything that's not what we would go through with the creator own project. You know, the creator own project, we do whatever we want. Um, and it's also different than if you're working on Batman or, or whatever, because again, you're just dealing with the editor. They are the licensor, they are the, the property people. Um, so we have a couple of extra steps to make our not real comics. But there, there's a not real. No, not real. <laughs> Are you bringing up canon already yeah. in the panel? No, 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 no. I'm bringing up that guy. Oh, that guy. You know what I'm talking about. Which guy? Those people in their that old ages books that aren't real, real comics. Yeah, that aren't real comics. <laughs> oh, right. Right. That guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have leeway uh, as far as like stylistically and artistically, and there's definitely leeway uh, in the in the writing too. Like you. You sort of get to play around a little bit and do your take on the ponies, which is, I think, fun. And I think it happens in the show too. You know, like to who are, to different directors and different writers are doing their their take on how the ponies act and how they behave. So that's sort of what we get to do. That was an exciting answer. I Sorry, think we, everyone. Well, I think we were. I think we were all kind of surprised when we took on the project. Cause usually, if you're doing a licensed project, you're doing Mickey Mouse or whatever. They want. They want your art to look exactly like the previous art, like the previous yeah. art. They want a standard flow. 
And when the job came to me of doing My Little Pony, I didn't want to do just standard model sheets. I was like, if you're going to do that, just get screen, screen grabs and make it like that European comic that everybody the read. Everyone. Um, and uh, I was like, I want it to look like a comic book. And Hasbro was like, what do you mean? And I was like, just trust me. Just trust me. But I, I showed them smart, and I was like, okay. So they've actually really, really given us a lot of slack on the leash as far as what we can do with art, you know, they're really pretty happy with what we've been doing, um, which is, you know, great for us. It's much easier. It is much easier. And I, I, you guys get a better product if we're happier with what we're doing. So That's like, I remember being scared when I first got the job, because I was like, I have to make the colors look like Flash, but I tried it first and it looked kind of bad. And then I just did whatever and I got the general ballpark of the colors and Hasbro was all right with it. So I was like, so given how the extra step of the licensor, but also involving the editor, because it's not just a project that you guys came together on your own to do, how much ability do you have to collaborate with each other throughout the process? I could, <laughs> I could auction this thing off with the notes that Katie and I have on here that never actually make it to page. We collaborate. Continuous. Um, Andy and I have the added benefit that we have known each other for a very long time. Like, he's my super bestie, guys. <laughs> um, and it's like, because I feel totally comfortable going, you know, 2 a.m. Hey, Andy, I have an idea. Hey, Andy. 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 And it's. <laughs> You know, in the middle of the night, my phone buzzes and my wife wakes up and she goes, your wife is calling. <laughs> and, uh, and like I said, my husband is just like, I, I don't get it, but all, all right. It's not like you're going to leave me for him. Because then my husband then does this. And like, <laughs> Could you not? He's super handsome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know on mine and Andy's comics, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of collaboration. But I know that not every artist writer team is like that because sometimes they they've never met, you know, most of the time. A lot of times, I would say half the times, the the writers that I work with are people that I that I don't like. I'll either talk to a couple times during the production of the comic or. I think everybody I've talked to at least a couple times, but uh, then other times there are people that I've known for years. It's sort of a mixed bag with me because Bobby won't let me just have like one writer because I think these two got so much power, so much they're mad with power, and he doesn't want any more teams. He just wants like single people that he can push around. <laughs> That's like, I don't think I ever really deal with the writers. They don't see what I've done until the very end. It's like it's true. Dude, how much I collaborate depends on the artist. It's like Andy gives me a lot of notes. Tony gives me a few notes. Um, I'm working with Ben Bates right now on the Power Ponies annual, and he's just like, do whatever. And I'm like, all right, guys, that's cool. <laughs> so. How many of you guys, by chance, happen to be at San Diego? Anybody? Woo! Mm -hmm. Okay, did you guys see the giant blow-ups of Ben Bates' Power Pony pages, the Maniac story, yeah. at the Hasbro booth? They were oh, phenomenal. They're super cool. Um, I didn't color the ones that were at San Diego because I don't think I'd started on it yet. Maybe I'm wrong. I didn't see them, but um, I'm like 20 pages in and there's 20 more to go. But it's looking gorgeous. It's like, I love Ben's art. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Ben's art is he very did, organic. Very, he did some really fun. sweet stuff on it. Yeah. So does the collaboration and coordination of the different pony projects like the um friends forever team the main comic book in the series does that all happen through the editors or do the creative teams get to talk to each other at all i'd say it's probably all through bobby yeah wait say it again i was looking at my phone <laughs> <laughs> so there there's i was several... looking up ben bates's my little pony art from san diego <laughs> trying to make sure so the baltimore is the interaction and collaboration between like the Friends Forever team, the uh -huh. main comic book, and the show to make sure there are no contradictions and everything sort of flows well together. Do the creative teams do that interaction, or is it done through a third party that sort of delegates to you guys? That's a, that's a lot of Bobby, although lately I've sort of taken it upon myself to, to make the uh, My Little Pony comic book universe 
like its own thing of just mixing everything from every comic book into all my comics. Whenever they say like an extra pony, I just put some extra from a different comic book into mine so that people start to weave together the the rich tapestry that we haven't actually been building. <laughs> well, you, put, you put little tibbles in it. Yeah, yeah, that's what Tiberius, that's Tiberius in the last issue that came out and a bunch of other like random ponies that people wouldn't expect to have seen again after their one-shot appearance. Yeah, unfortunately with the main book and Friends Forever, you know, you're wrestling schedules and a person that's writing one book might not have the chance to interact with another book, which is kind of a shame because we can if we're not careful, we're going to really step on each other's toes, but that's Bobby's job. He tries to keep everything going in line, and that's also Hasbro. They make sure that everything's going in line and that we're not contradicting the show, and the show's not contradicting us, so we're not stepping on each other's toes. So, so you talked a little bit about really being given some creative leeway visually from Hasbro in terms of the style of the way the comic book looks, but when you began the comic book, were you guys sort of asked to lay down a baseline tone for the other creative teams that came on the comic books to follow, or sort of each team really given their own crack at it? Um, I don't know if IDW thought it would last longer than the first arc. <laughs> <laughs> so, we just kind of did our thing. Yeah, I, I think everybody was shocked by the response to the book. We certainly were. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that they let us get away with um, just the look of issue three. That was like one of my favorites to color, just because of the all the mood lighting and like the red sky and everything was so scary. I'm surprised they let us do so many scary things in that art. Rissalus is scary. She is scary. That's why she's cool. I like her. A digger. And it's I don't know if how you guys what kind of interaction you guys have had with the kids, but you know when I'm drawing Chrysalis or whatever, and they've got that on my table and. The, the parent brings their little daughter or little boy by and they say, you know, no, honey, really, wouldn't you rather? No, I want the scary one, but it's scary. That's why I want it. <laughs> they love it. They love it. They're not afraid of it. They eat it up. Well, it's like when I was a kid, the movie that stands out in my mind the most is The Dark Crystal. <laughs> it scared the blood Jesus out of me, but I still loved it. Uh, Return to Oz for me with those wheelers and the heads floating in the jars. It still scares me as an adult. <laughs> so. I'm showing my age, but one guy in the audience is going to know what I mean when I say the slee stacks. Oh, God. <laughs> those terrify me to this day. <laughs> with the big hamster eyes. So, Heather, you talked, um, you mentioned mood lighting just now, and I know a lot of pitfalls for early artists is altering color depending on ambient light or if things are very in shadow. So can you talk a little bit about the way you, and the ponies have such distinctive color palettes, how you alter that with lighting, um, especially if there's something glowing so there's color introduced and still have the ponies look distinct as that's still Rarity's colors. Well, pretty much, um, it helps a lot if you're working digitally because a lot of that's the power of Photoshop layers. Um, I generally do like a lot of gradients when I do like mood lighting. I have a lot of, if I, I'm going to speak weird for you guys that aren't familiar with Photoshop, but pretty much um, you have a layer, set it on hard light or screen, and you put like a color over the ponies, and you, I have like the regular flats under that layer, so I'm going to have like red lighting set on hard light, like you know, like making right. the ponies reddish. So it'll still kind of retain the general tone mm -hmm. of what the ponies' colors are under there. But that way I'm like, not just making stuff up. Cause it's like, if it's my personal work, I just throw colors around. Like, um, I highly recommend people like looking at stuff with crazy colors. I really like, um, there's two um, series called Kill a Kill and um, Panty and Stuff. Yeah. watch it I'm just like this is just like color porn pretty much because it's gorgeous <laughs> look at things with really nice palettes if you're starting out with coloring I highly recommend ripping off palettes from other sources and applying them to your own I mean not if you're like gonna sell it that's not cool <laughs> but for learning copy others and you will get better at, like doing your own thing so typically when you've got a page how many layers mm -hmm. on, a, on a given page I have a background layer for all background elements. I have a sky layer, so I don't have to worry about getting any shading on it. Um, I have just my character flats, 
and then I have a shading layer for the characters. And then sometimes I'll do like, if I'm doing fancy lighting, I'll have one more layer above that with all the lighting set on like hard lighter screen. And that's where the little eye gradients and the hair highlights and stuff go. So I try to keep it really organized because I know some people that do like all sorts of crazy stuff, like 50 layers. And I'm just like. Oh. <laughs> I do like at least, at least 70, I think. Oh my God. God. Do you but use folders? Yeah, I use folders. Okay. I, get, I get wild. <laughs> but I always think that like whatever little piece I'm putting down, I'm gonna need to, to come back to later. And I never do, but I always have the option, I guess. Like I'm gonna need that tan patch. I might need to move it somewhere. So I keep layers. And then I also do the, the color holds on the line, so I do covers. And those take up a lot of layers too. All right, real quick while we're on this topic, how many of you guys here do your own art? Just for yourself, professionally, whatever. That's a lot. Yell it out. We're blind. Okay. How many of you work digitally? How many of you work traditionally? All right. You have no idea how many people I have met recently who cannot grasp the concept that I draw this with a pencil. <laughs> The idea of drawing something on paper is an alien thought to them. It really is. And I was like, am I just that old? He is, to be fair. You kids get off my lawn with your way calm. Hey, Andy, over there. <laughs> I feel like there's like a I lot invented of... that. That's good job. <laughs> I feel like there's like a lot of young artists that I've seen that like they'll draw a pencil and it'll look really bad, and then they get a Cintiq and they assume that that is going to make them very good. Mm -hmm. Digital is just a tool. It's just another medium. It's like I learned how to paint traditionally before I ever did any Photoshop. That's actually how I learned how to color digitally. Is I just applied what I knew through traditional and to my digital. I think. Um... You know, if you've never, if you play with the Wacom or the mouse or whatever, however you do it, try a pencil once or twice, because you're going to start learning things that you didn't notice on the screen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to benefit both, so. This probably, we could discuss the differences in our uh, process, probably, because I think you, me, and Katie, and Heather all do the same thing slightly differently. Because you do webcomic, is it all digital? Yep, it's all in Manga Studio. And I do sort of a hybrid digital and traditional where I do my layouts, a combination of digitally and on paper, and then I scan them in and manipulate them all together. And I print blue lines and I do my line art traditionally. Well, you sometimes will ink digital, mm -hmm. right? Scan it and ink digital? Yeah. And what do you do that in? Uh, I do that in Photoshop, uh -huh. um, but other than that, it's I, I still love to ink traditionally, but sometimes just for the time constraint, if I got to color it, it's like, oh, I got a Cintiq. Da, 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 done. Meanwhile, That's exactly how it goes. I, was, <laughs> I sing while I do it. She does. Again, that video to the highest bidder. <laughs> it's super great. You know, meanwhile, I'm sitting there in my dungeon with my little bottle of ink and my brush. Dip it. Pony nostril. <laughs> Pony nostril. Do you use actual brushes? I... Or you use nibs? No, I, I, I fight a lot with nibs. I will use them depending upon oh, the texture. So terrible. The majority of my inking is done with a Raphael Kalinsky Sable number 4. Ooh. It's a oh. tiny brush. Some Kalinsky fans out there. Yep. And uh, for some background stuff or, or hatching or whatever, I will use a rapidograph mechanical pen. But that's typically what I what I use. Speaking of pony nostril, do you go the show way or the intuitive way? <laughs> Depends on their emotion. Mm. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me Carry on. Make sure you hold on down. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, one of the really fantastic things about the My Little Pony, the show and the comic, is how everything looks like it belongs in the same world very obviously. Everything from the plants to the architecture, the characters, um, they all have that sort of equestrian 
feel when you're introducing something new that hasn't been seen before, a new building, a new plant or whatever, a new animal? Um, what sort of strategies do you have, or even the way they talk that gives it and keeps it having that sort of equestrian feel? Um, that's actually a, a pretty neat question because we've done things, you know, every once in a while we'll, uh, if you have to do a, a, a cow or whatever, you know, there's been an established look on the show so you want to look up, you just don't want to make up a generic cow and color it purple because that's not, what, that's not accurate to the world of the show because if you'll notice, the ponies are the only ones with the wild colors, the cows are cow colored. <laughs> um, you know, things like that. Um, so it's a matter of bringing a little creativity to have something new, but you want to match the show in a feel. Because um, uh, some of our, in the new Friends Forever, we have, we introduced some new villains. Woo! Woo! Who will be on the Hang on for this originality. <laughs> Tell them. They're cows. <laughs> and they are called the cattle rustlers. <laughs> but wait! There's more. The leader of this pack of bull is King Lawnhorn. <laughs> and his his number one, Doc Holstein. <laughs> and then there is also Bully the Kid. <laughs> and my personal favorite. There's Angus McSteer. Angus, that was Andy. <laughs> and then Jersey Shore. <laughs> Guys, I'm super proud of it. <laughs> but it was this, fun. It was so much fun yeah, to write. And there, but, he's, he ends up, he's a great villain. Yeah. He, and the, the characterization is awesome. I, our editor read it and he's like, I love this guy, you know. Um, but when when I was creating him, when I was doing the bulls, I was like, well, the closest thing we've seen to a bull on the show is Iron Will. So it was kind of a, a mix between him and the cows that we've seen. And then I added a little bit of myself because I wanted King Longhorn to look like a king, so he's got that giant hump on his back like some bulls get, but the others don't have that, so. It's just a matter of working in a little personality, but trying to stay in the world of the has, show. Uh, has anybody seen the movie Blazing Saddles? <laughs> so, what I was thinking of when I was writing King Longhorn and like thinking of him visually is like when Mongo is riding in on that bull, <laughs> like them merging into one thing. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. So that, that's what I was going for. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as far as colors with the new things, what do you do as far as, I mean, are you just, I'm going to play with the colors, or are you trying to look at the show for ideas? I try to look at the show because I kind of want to, I don't want it to look exactly like the show, but I try and, you know, stay true to the show. I don't want to, like, all ponies are going to be ridiculous colors, and when it comes to, I've had to color a lot of instances where you see Fluttershy's house and like a bajillion animals that Tony drew to torture me. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to keep those realistic. I, I always pull up references, especially if it's a, an established species like the rabbits or the weasels or the bears. Mm -hmm. So it's it's important to me that I'm consistent with the show. There's not gonna be like hot pink cows or <laughs> other things. But if, it, if it's a magical creature, I go wild. But otherwise, I try and stay grounded with the look of the show. Me and Heather accidentally created a whole page of new ponies last week <laughs> because I turned it in without cutie marks, and so she just went like hog wild and colored them whatever. <laughs> and so then I just had to make new cutie marks for all these brand new colored ponies. Sorry. <laughs> the best one though is I invented a pony called Roscoe who's got chicken and waffles. <laughs> That's my new favorite. I was gonna pony. say. <laughs> Literally, his talent. He just eats chicken. Although the name <laughs> Chicken and Waffles totally fits within Pony Dump. Yeah. That's like, this is my niece, Chicken and Waffles. 
So we're going to open it up for Q&A, but while people are having a moment to sort of think of questions and assemble in front of the mic, um, what is the one thing you've always wanted to talk about or do at a panel that no one has ever asked you? I don't think that's legal in this state. <laughs> you could do an encore. I could do an encore. Yeah, go, go ahead, yeah, do it. Do it. Let's not do much dance moves. Oh my god. Oh, Tony, is there anything you want to talk about with the panel? No, man, I just say whatever I want. You know me. <laughs> I, I, I've literally been asked all the questions I want to be asked. You guys ain't even to line up, as far as I can see. Oh, that's a long line. <laughs> well, what about how do you groom your beard? I don't, as you can tell. It's get, the more I work, the more old manny it looks. And it gets a little Miami Vice-y when I have a little time to tighten it up real nice. What about you? Do you have any beard tips for the audience? <laughs> uh, I have a trimmer and a rope coach from Nice. Um, well, was yours less? How, how gray was it when you started on My Little Pony? <laughs> <laughs> Not as gray as yeah. it is now. <laughs> Mine was um, none gray. Do any of you have I, I have the I have the wonderful distinction of being the oldest member of our entire MLP comic team. <laughs> I think you're the oldest member of My Little Pony entirely. I'm older than Mitch Larson. Are you older than Kathy Westlock? I think I am. Are you older than so. the inventor of my little <laughs> <laughs> Are you older than the first pony? <laughs> the pony. You're gonna tell him. The, <laughs> Andy, Andy, are you older than the olden ponies of Nye that had stone tablets that came down from the mountainside? <laughs> Thou shalt not. <laughs> I bring to you these 15 commandments. <laughs> these 10 commandments. The fact that he's wearing the robes made my day. He did that. That worked out. Okay. Alright, let's do questions. That was, good, that was a good plan. Alright, alright, let's get to the questions. Speed round. All right, my name is Yunova, and here's a question to all of you. Um, as you may have noticed, there are some negative comments about your comic um, contradicting the canon of the show. So I was wondering, um, do you get like um, any news from like the writers or even Hasbro about like what's going to be the switch for the future season so you won't um, contradict um, themselves and your stories? Or do you just go on the fly and create like a different type of a universe with like um, all these main characters, sort of like with Luna and or um, Darren Do and your bookworm saga? So the first time hearing about this canon. Can you explain more about it? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We just make everything up as we can. Not really. <laughs> no, there's... No, no. Katie, you probably have the most experience with this, right? Uh, well, for me, it's, you know, I do get notes from Hasbro uh, when I send in pitches and stuff like that, and when I send in scripts saying, yeah, don't do this. Because, uh, I mean, I think there was... Uh, a point where I had Scootaloo flying, and they were like, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Um, and I was like, aww. Yeah. Um, and uh, I had a Rarity story that I pitched that they said, no, that is the upcoming episode, Rarity Takes Manhattan, so don't do that. <laughs> um, and I was like, wow, I was really close. <laughs> Except mine had Tim Gunn in it, so it would have been so good. <laughs> Come on. But no, we we work on a radically different schedule than the DHX team does. I mean, they're, because it's animation, because it's so time consuming, they're actually way ahead of where we are. So Hasbro does Watchdog, okay, you can't, I mean, we've even been told down to a line of dialogue, you can't say this line of dialogue because Rarity is gonna say this in this episode and that's not gonna, flow. Uh, the camping scene. We were going to have him camping. And yeah, the, the cutie mark crusaders camping. You can't go camping because we're going camping in the show. <laughs> and these horses just aren't that outdoors. They don't go camping often. They don't go camping often. It'd be super um, awkward to show them camping So twice. yeah, we work together to a reasonable degree what we can. But like I said, we're on such radically different schedules. And then it's probably the most common question we get, are the comics canon? The short answer is, if you want them to be, they are. If you don't want them to be, they're not. I mean, it's, it's up to each individual. 
I mean, there are some people that don't consider certain episodes canon because they just don't like them. <laughs> as far as Hasbro is concerned, it is. As far as we're concerned, we are until the show tells us otherwise. If the show, because the show's got to come first. As far as I'm concerned, we are, and then if the show contradicts, it's not canon. <laughs> I like that answer way better. Too. Right. Yeah, the writers seem to like us, so that's about as canon as I, as a proof of canon for me. Megan's only kicked me once. I was gonna say I've met a lot of the writers, and none of them have punched me in the face. Yes. <laughs> they always hug us and love us. So I got I got that going for me. Yeah, we've we've actually got when we get to interact with them, we have a really really fun great relationship with the show staff from the actors to the writers, and it's just wonderful, and we're hoping we can figure out ways to interact more. I want to so. put it out there that I would super like to see Tibbles on the show. Tiberius. Woo! Actually, on that note, someone recently asked on the IDW forums, you know, like, no, it was, it was the San Diego panel, like, someone asked one of the show staff if they would include stuff from the comic, and they said maybe. There was a question at the San Diego panel about that, and they said, you know, there's always a possibility. There was a little bit much read into it that some people were like, they're doing the comics. They're, they're, no, not yet. Give us time. Like, if there's a possum but. that just scurries by in the background and Luna happens to be, like, 80 feet away, <laughs> I that will counts. consider that, like, okay, yeah. there, there he is. But really, I mean... A lot of what happens on the show is up to you guys. I mean, believe it or not, you guys really do influence some of the stuff that they do on the show. So if there's stuff you want to see, tell them. You know. The next question. Um, uh, I just wanted to have two questions. Two. Um, I am currently writing a webcomic about my little starlet, my little pony called My Little Starlet. And I just want to know an opinion or ask you a, a question about something. I'm also making cow villains in mine. <laughs> except I have that trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal my go see. Those guys invented cows. But they're part of they're Russian cows, part of the cow mafia from Moose Cow. Moose Cow. <laughs> Uh, and I, I love this. <laughs> I want to subscribe and to your newsletter. I think there's one that's a mercenary, and I call him Bullseye. But I, but the head honcho, I'm having trouble with his name. This is not a question. No, okay. <laughs> Mafi mafiosas. What do we Mafia got? Mafia cow. Russian mafiosas. Russian mafiosas. He's throwing off. <laughs> Carpaccio. Carpaccio. That's a, I don't know. Um, well, I've just gone through all the Russian I know. <laughs> red meat. You know, red. <laughs> drop the mic, Tony. Drop the mic. I'm going back to work. Would you like to drop the scepter and just be done? Just walk off the to him now. Tony, All right, what was your, Tony's what's your second? My second question is, Marvel or DC? DC. And which is your favorite DC? Oh, DC, not this new 52. Yeah, that's, that question has, has changed. I started a DC, excuse me. Um, and I have recently become much more of a Marvel fan. Uh, Marvel is doing a bunch of amazing things right now. And I don't just say that because I work for them. Yeah. So, totally Marvel. It's like, Miss Marvel, um, the new Ghost Rider, Hawkeye, they are brilliant, amazing books. Yeah, Thor. Yeah, girl Thor. <laughs> That yes, Marvel I'm very also. excited about that. Chris Evans is Yeah, Chris Evans is ready for his Oscar. Yeah, he, Chris Evans said at Comic-Con, he's like, I'll play Girl Thor. <laughs> Don't give it to a Hemsworth. <laughs> I'll have the surgery and everything. <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's... What are uh, you they're doing you amazing things. Oh, I'm Marvel. Yes. <laughs> Always Marvel. Oh, Marvel Masterworks. You're the only DC Favorite favorite superhero. I like Batman. Batman. Yeah, Batman! 
I'm excited. Batman. I'm excited about the new Batman. Applejack. <laughs> this guy. So now we can use the confusion to draw the art. Uh, what tablet do you use, and what tablet do you recommend? What tablet do you guys use? N204, Cintiq 21UX. I think Bought I used. I think I still got a bamboo. <laughs> the, the old bamboo, yeah. But I got a new one, too, but I just haven't hooked it up yet. I got the N204. I have a pad of Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> the stone tablet he recommends. <laughs> Andy has a rather large cat warmer that says Cintiq on it. <laughs> Give it to me if you're not using it. Oh, I use it. I do not draw digitally. I use it for coloring. Every once in a while I'll draw something digital and I, I feel dirty. I feel like I cheated. <laughs> on paper? <laughs> How could you? Andy has to call up the paper at the end of the night. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I slipped again. Most of your child support fallen Andy. Hello. 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 Hi there. So I finally got to wanting to draw again, which is why I ran off and just went tearing through the convention what, for just paper. Now? Just now? Yeah, just now. Two seconds. I'm the flash. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that got me thinking. I have a question for you guys. Um, seems to happen a lot more in college, but do you got? But do you guys uh -oh. still struggle with the? Motivation, wanting to actually get up out of your bed and do your job today, actually sketch. And you see what I'm wearing. No, <laughs> and um, if you have that problem still, where you're just like, I, I can't do it today. What do you do about it? How, how do you fix that? Because I'll I tell you one thing, and I I can guarantee the other guys are going to agree with me. The deadline is a great motivator. Oh no, there's there's also the fact that if you. Right, draw comics for a living. You are doing the coolest job in the world, and if you are not waking up every day giddy, then you suck. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. It's like, you're, you have the coolest job in the world. When my work sucks, it's still the best job that I ever had. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, I worked at Starbucks for nearly 10 years, and then I quit to do comics. So I'm the, I get up, once I get a cat off of me, I get out of bed, and then. I just work and I love it. Yeah. Um, you I gotta mean, miss those benefits though. If, if, it's, if it's hard for you to do stuff, always set yourself like, you know, like Andy said, set yourself like mini deadlines. I mean, that's a way to yeah. kick yourself in the pants. Um, I mean. And if you can't, ask somebody else to do it for you. A friend or family member or something like that. Like ask your jerkiest them. friend. Yeah. <laughs> your your rainbow you dash. Yeah. Get your rainbow dash on the phone and say, please start calling me every 30 minutes. Yeah. But <laughs> and say, is this done yet? It happens to all of us. I mean, we'll be drawing. There are times I'll get three quarters of the way through a page. I'm like, this really sucks. And I cannot turn this in consciously. You know, you, that motivation sometimes doesn't happen. I, I find I do much, much better work at night. Um, I'm an eye owl anyway, so most of the inking is done at like 4 a.m. Um, because that's just me. So there's gonna be things, if TV working, even if the TV is on, if that helps you spark your imagination, do things like that. You know. Listen to a really sweet music mix on Pandora. I just turn on the Dragon Force mix and then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Tony, do you do you do music or the TV when you're working? Uh, I if I wanted to work faster, which I do, I would just listen to music all the time. But I need to be like stimulated, so a lot of times it's like talk radio or podcasts, and then TV too. I got a sweet TV. Because I know you typically do music. Uh, music while I'm writing. Music without lyrics, because otherwise I start typing the lyrics, <laughs> which gets super awkward for the editor. Um, but uh, while I'm drawing, I listen to audiobooks. Uh, a lot of audiobooks. The Harry Potter audiobooks in both the US and the UK versions are pretty fantastic. I don't know why. I mean, I've gone through the catalog of Netflix when I'm drawing. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but the Dick Van Dyke show is very conducive to drawing oh, the ponies. Well. <laughs> um, and so is Magnum P.I., which is why he's been in the comic book three times. <laughs> so, it's, just, it's just finding that little thing that pushes your creativity. Unfortunately, we only have time for one more question. Before you all Sorry. leave, I have a, I want to show off my Harry Potter shirt. 
because it has Voldemort eating rarity in the Forbidden Forest. <laughs> goo from the 80s. It looks like it looks like blueberry pie, so we assume that all the ponies are like fruit flavored. <laughs> oh. One more guy, come on. Yeah. Hey, he's right. at the mic. Uh, is this on? Okay, good. Um, I just wanted to say thanks very much, Andy, for this commission. Um, and yeah, it's the one uh, that you drew for me uh, t uh, this weekend. Oh. Anyway, um, you know uh, when you said what we want to see and that? Here's my suggestion for what we want to see. No, the show, not yeah, the us. Show. We don't have <laughs> suggestions. You don't want to see Andy dance. Yeah, I, I do want to see Andy dance. Yes, we do. Celestia's evil father, voiced by Christopher Lee. Is that, is that a good idea? I would do anything for Christopher Lee to voice any pony. I'll, I'll have Christopher Lee voice Twilight. That's fine. <laughs> Canon that you have added to the universe. It can be as little as anything or as big as anything. What's like the favorite, favorite thing we've done in, in the books that we've added to the book canon? Yeah, just the canon. What's your favorite piece of canon Ooh. you've added? I gotta admit, I, I do love me some Tibbles. I do love Tiberius. Um, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Hey, you know when you've got haters, you must be doing something right. personally add um, an accident that Tony included. <laughs> I, I, I made a liar and alicorn. You're welcome, everyone. <laughs> when I get exhausted, I draw alicorns all over the place. There's like 40 of he them He sees now. them everywhere in his dreams. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like the cloud ones that were dumb and in my first issue ever, and I'm just making them. I'm just going to make them Somebody happen. Somebody was walking around the other day with a plush. Really? Yeah. Cloud Gremlin. Son of a gun. I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go steal it from him. Yeah, for sure. And I'm gonna get a lot of hate for saying this. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. But I really, really, really. She's leaving because she knows what I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's asked about reflections are all panel. I was, I was very happy with. Good King Sombra, as yeah. they call it. It was, so, it was just, if it was up to me, if I had all the money in the world, I would get an animated episode, and I would have Pierce Brosnan do his voice. Oh. So he could call everybody darling in that, in that voice. Oh my God. <laughs> or, or Roger Moore, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I would, unfortunately he's dead, but I would have Paul Lynn for Star Swirl the Bearded. <laughs> All lens corpse. <laughs> so, I, so I get John Noble because he's kind of he's kind of wacky. But yeah, I was I was very happy with with our end results on that because it was it was a massive 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 work. That's another story. That's a story for I'll, another time. I like the hippie ponies from the Rarity Micro. <laughs> Because last year we said we want to see some cosplay of flax and wheat, and we haven't. Nobody. Oh, so none. this is on you guys. How could you? How could it's you? Like you have Andy's down. brony heart. I stole <laughs> this robe from the hotel for you guys. <laughs> what are you gonna be like the 14th Princess Luna? <laughs> All right. <laughs> now that we're insulting them, can we go? Yes. There was a. Somebody was cos I didn't get to see it, but somebody was cosplaying as Luna, and they had a stuffed Tibbles. Yeah. So it was, it was really very tickling. Yeah. Very tickling. That. Everyone, let's give a big round of applause for our guests. Yeah. I want to thank BronyCon for having us out. This is like the best convention ever. Thank you. Uh,
members of the staff here is phenomenal. Fantastic. We are con veterans. We've never been handled so wonderfully, and I mean by fans and by the staff, it's just but it's just been awesome. <laughs> I get to feel like a princess because everyone gets me coffee when I ask for it. And I'm like, and it has to be Starbucks. Because <laughs> Heather's a diva. We're all I, I can't do regular coffee. I went off on my own this morning and I finally got back and like, where'd you go? <laughs> it's like I was in the empty auditorium dancing <laughs> with the stage lights on. What do you mean? Instead of doing commissions. Yes. So anybody else who has questions, feel free to come by our table and we'll do the best we can. There's like a half hour left, so make them really yeah. good questions. Make it count. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.